Oh, really and strange. you go like that, it just snaps. You, really it just, you just, yeah, that's it. You just rip the gears yeah. out. So, yeah, yeah. but it's very responsive. Yeah. Well, I think this. I like the mechanic aspect. Means that it will be utterly responsible, won't it? Compared to oh, yeah. compared to these kind of systems, where I'm like a hundred percent VR guy, but I'm interested in VR. And uh, a year ago, I I've noticed that in the field of VR, there's really not a so affordable uh, hand motion capturing device. I mean, I know there's a leak motion, but uh, optical sometimes give you some some sort of limitation. You can't just throw your hands in that direction. And if it's out of the range of the two cameras, you can't, you can't see. So after all, we have to put something in our hands. And uh, what the people have been doing in the past uh, five months was that a lot of people were using uh, IMUs, inertia measuring units. So they were putting, they were putting at least eight IMU units on each each hand, and the IMU unit would measure the bending of the hand. But the problem with the IMU is that they're quite expensive, and uh, IMU unit usually cost over fifty dollars in cost. But uh, so, like in the near uh, ten years uh, or in the near five years, the MEMS technology has been developing really fastly. And uh, right now, the price you can get, the lowest price you can get for an IMU unit would be uh, $12. But again, for the hand, for each hand temporary motion devices, it's going to cost like around $100. So what we did, we took a completely different approach. We didn't uh, start from doing the, a downgrade of the film, uh, filmmaking industry. We started building our own devices, which is this one that you're seeing here. Uh, this is called Dexmo. It is a mechanical access capturing system that captures 11 degrees of freedom of the hand motion. And I'll be talking about the haptics device later. I will start with this one. So as you can see, this is a, um, this is a pretty cool device that, um, that follows your hand motion. So we didn't use IMU. Like, we have one IMU on the back, but it was only for you know, rotationing and uh, that tracking. But um, we have 11 rotational sensors that's embedded here, here, here. So as you can see, it follows the split of the finger as well as bending of the finger. So you can actually go all the way in there. So it doesn't block your hand motion. And um, for the thumb, we actually have three degrees of freedom. So if you take a look from this angle, sorry if, uh, if you can see it. So here, we actually use a special bottling design to uh, transfer this, this motion of the thumb as well. So that's actually uh, better than the IMU uh, gloves that I've tested. Because um, when I was in China, there was a company called Perception Neurons. I think a lot of people are very familiar with this. And we're very good friends with them. And we tested <coughs> their uh, gloves. Uh, so there was one problem with the thumb, because when you put one IMU unit on the thumb, you only notice its orientation. It was very hard to actually do the inverse schematics to get out of where exactly the thumb is pointing at. So what we did, we have a rotational sensor pulling up each of the rotational joints on the thumb, which gives you a much more detailed movement of the thumb. And I think this is pretty critical, because in the, VR, in, the, in the field of VR, we are actually want to do something with the hand. A thumb is a uh, you know, very critical part. So here is the next one. Uh, we spent the past year developing this, and so far we got 17 iterations. And the one that I'm wearing now is one of our latest uh, model. And uh, I'd like to talk a bit more about this device. So before I show you this device, let's have a look at this unit. So in the past five months, we spent a lot of time trying to make this thing smaller and smaller and uh, to make sure it works. This is the uh, force feedback unit. So in the past, a lot of people want to uh, you know, add force feedback to their whatever data glove they were building. But data gloves are data gloves, and they're not exoskeletons. It's pretty hard to actually add the uh, force feedback in them. So since we're already doing the exoskeleton, we thought we would have a unique advantage of um, adding on the new uh, force feedback in it. So this thing, um, well, I just briefly introduce to this to you and how it works. So we have a small servo actuator in the middle, and uh, it has a special braking mechanism, which when, uh, just imagining when you're wearing this, and you're controlling an avenger, uh, a hand of an avenger in the game, and you want to pick up an object. And when the tip of the finger hits the digital object, uh, you, know, you can set up a collision detecting in VR stuff. You guys are very developers, you know what I'm talking about. And when you hit the thing, it sends back signal to the device, and the device will actuate this actuator, and the actuator rotates and hits this part and breaks the joint. So the joint won't be able to rotate anymore. Think about, like, think about how the things actually operate. So when you bend your fingers inwards and the, uh, the actuators break, you can't move your fingers, physically you can't phys move your fingers inwards anymore. So that creates a pressure on the tip of the finger. Um, please give me one minute to put this thing on so you have a better idea of how this thing works. So this 
this unit I'm having here um, actually has two additional piece of force feedback unit. So we didn't do a, a full five finger division, and I'll explain the reason later. So. So if you take a look at this, this actually looks a bit longer and larger than the other device because this thing goes all the way up to uh, your fingertip. And uh, that's how like the actual pressure is created. So when you do that and the joint locks, it, it sort of prohibits your uh, finger movement. Then we move inwards, it creates pressure on the tip of the finger. So we've tested this and this is perfectly working. But the only problem with this prototype is uh, it was 3D printed because we were you know, testing it. We, did, we were going to do a lot of testing. Uh, we did a lot of testing, so, uh, but don't worry, when the consumer version comes out, it will be made with metal, so the, the gears will be made with metal, so uh, don't worry about the strings too much. Right now it's only for testing purposes, and uh, I would say so far it's working fine. Uh, this device, uh, compared to that device, actually they look pretty similar, and uh, they actually are, so this one also senses the degrees of freedom of the hand motion, and uh, the rotational sensors for, that used to be there is now over here, and uh, it also senses split of the finger as well as three degrees of freedom for the thumb and uh, one degrees of freedom, oh, two degrees of freedom for each finger. Okay, so I will come back a little bit about the um, development of Dexmo. So in the past, we actually uh, tested a lot of hand mechanical exercise and system to capture hand motion. Starting with um, this one. Uh, 